obviously we all saw the Truth Social <laughs> post. I was going to say a tweet. The he's, truth. He's, still on, the truth. Uh, he's still not on, on Twitter just yet. And then we saw all the remarks from potential candidates or the Republicans. And the Trump, the Trump campaign really was waiting for one individual to break his silence, and that was Governor DeSantis. Mm. Take a listen to how he did just that. Look, I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. <laughs> but what I can speak to is that if you have a prosecutor who is ignoring crimes happening every single day in his jurisdiction, and he chooses to go back many, many years ago uh, to try to use something about porn star hush money payments, you know, that's an example of pursuing a political agenda and weaponizing the office. I think that was probably the best Governor DeSantis was going to get, right? He made his point, but he really drew out what the issue at hand was. Oh, yeah. This was the most sarcastic DeSantis you're ever going to see. Pox on both your houses, right? I'm going to, like, really talk a lot about the, you know, awful thing that you did, Donald Trump. And then I'm going to go after the prosecutor for prosecuting you for those awful things that you did. And and I, I, I must admit, I mean, it kind of made him likable. I mean, like, you heard there a little bit of laughing in the press conference. People sort of got a kick out of it. But it was his way of sending a very clear message to Donald Trump. And frankly, much more clear than any other presidential candidate I've seen, other than Chris Christie, who just berates him all, you know, Donald Trump all the time. But uh, uh, DeSantis really used the opportunity well, I thought. Jeannie, Lindsey Graham said over the weekend uh, that the DA in this case has done more to help Donald Trump's candidacy than anyone in America has <laughs> or could have. Is he right? No, you know, I don't think Lindsey Graham is right about that. This does help Donald Trump with fundraising, certainly. Mm -hmm. It's going to help him stay relevant. He was all over the news all weekend. You know, we we're all watching his truth social. Um, <laughs> it may help him win the primary. But you know who this really helps is this really helps Joe Biden if he decides to run in a general election. Why? How? Be the same way it helped the Democrats in 2022. Nothing, and quite frankly, Joe Biden in 20. Nothing gets Joe Biden's support from independents and moderates needed to win these elections than putting Trump on the ballot. The last thing, and this is why most Republican senators are running away from this, the last thing Republicans want to do right now or should want to do is talk about Donald Trump. When he forces it, this is why they have such narrow numbers in the House and lost the Senate and Joe Biden is in the White House. So it's a big win for Joe Biden, not so much for the Republican Party overall. Yeah, and the Republican Party this week Weekend is in Orlando. They're at this retreat. And what's the first question Speaker McCarthy has to address? Mm -hmm. And that's the former president. Yeah, and, and the former president, who he has yet to endorse to run for president, mm. which is pretty interesting considering he himself says that Donald Trump's probably the main reason why he got to be Speaker. So where's the quid pro quo there? Uh, look, I think this is, uh, I, I agree with Jeannie. I, I think this is very helpful to Joe Biden if he chooses to run for president because it just reminds everybody that, hey, we kind of like some of the policies that Trump had during his presidential campaign. We just hated all this noise, and this is noise. This means the presidency. This is a distraction to getting people elected down ballot. And, and, and the hope that a lot of Republicans have is that all that noise just goes away. Donald Trump is not going away. And Rick and Jeannie, we do have that sought that sound from McCarthy over the weekend. This really had to do with the protests. Take a listen. I don't think people should protest this, no. And I, I, I think President Trump, if you talk to him, he doesn't believe that either. I mean, I think, I think the thing that you may misinterpret when, the, when President Trump talks, when someone says that they can protest, he would probably be referring to my tweet, educate people about what's going on. He's not talking in a harmful way, and nobody should. That, that's what I figured as well when I read that. He was talking about education, uh, Jeannie. Of course, uh, in all caps, protest, exclamation point, in the wake of January 6th, might also be interpreted in a different way. Yeah, and, and poor poor McCarthy, right? Inbury said the first question. It was also the second, the third, the fourth, <laughs> the fifth. I mean, it was, right. I think somebody counted half the questions he got. They're trying to have a, you know, a policy retreat about all the things they've done and want to do, and it's Trump 24-7. And, of course, then he has to, you know, bend himself into a pretzel to try to explain that the protests, as we learned from January 6th, are actually 
a call for a peaceful educational moment in the country. Nobody's going to believe it, but this is where Kevin McCarthy finds himself, and this is the problem for Republicans in red districts, or yep. sorry, purple districts, is that this does not play well in those districts, and so he's trying to once again walk this line. Donald Trump just won't let him go. Poor Kevin McCarthy. Well,